sempre está Lá e vejo voltar Não era mais o mesmo Mas está no seu lugar Hello, I'm Seb Patrick from Cinematic Universe the podcast all about comic book and superhero movies and TV. I'm here today to talk to you about a subject that's very close to my heart, the DC Comics character Starman. Or, I should say, the DC Comics characters Starman. And that really gets to the nub of why I'm making this video. You may have seen, or heard on our podcast, that there's about to be a new Stargirl TV series, featuring Joel McHale as a version of Starman. But depending on how you count it, McHale's character will be the 10th, or possibly more, character to use that name at DC. So I thought it would be a good time to take a run through the history of the Starman lineage and why the name has become such an interesting and integral part of DC's overall history. We begin in 1941 when writer Gardner Fox and artist Jack Burnley created a new superhero called Starman. One of many obviously Superman-inspired characters to appear in the wake of 1939's Action Comics number no. 1, Starman was a bored playboy named Ted Knight who donned a red and green costume to fight crime using a star-powered gravity rod of his own invention. Ted debuted in DC's Adventure Comics issue 61, cover dated April 1941, and was a solid if unspectacular performer over the next five years. In December 1941, he made it onto the roster of the Justice Society, in issue number 8 of their All-Star Comics title. In 1946, however, Starman's stories in Adventure Comics came to an end, and by then, for complicated behind-the-scenes reasons, he'd also been removed from the Justice Society. He spent the entirety of the 1950s away from comics, only returning in the 1960s, when the Justice Society began to appear in crossovers with the Justice League. In 1965, DC seemingly tested the waters for a return for Starman, with issues 61 and 62 of The Brave and the Bold telling two stories of him teaming up with Black Canary. Ted retired for a while in the 1970s, but in 1977 the JSA were brought back in a newly revived All-Star Comics series. And since everyone seemed to have forgotten that Ted had actually left in 1944, he was present and correct once again. He continued to appear on and off with the JSA in the years that followed, before finally being shunted off with the rest of the team into a limbo dimension in the aftermath of Crisis on Infinite Earths. By this time, however, Ted was no longer the only hero named Starman to have appeared in DC Comics. In the late 70s and early 80s, DC actually attempted to launch not one, but two completely different characters with the same name. Created by Jerry Conway and Mike Vosberg in 1976, the first new Starman was a blue-skinned alien named Mikhail Thomas, who, if not for later events, might have been completely forgotten by history. He only appeared once, in issue 12 of DC's first issue special. At least Mikhail wasn't alone. First issue special was so successful that not a single one of its characters got an ongoing series off the back of it. But it was responsible for bringing the world such classic characters as The Green Team, Boy Millionaires, The Dingbats of Danger Street, and Lady Cop. Undeterred, DC obviously felt that Starman was too good a name not to use, so when Ted went quiet again in the early 1980s, they dusted it off once more. This time, the architects were Paul Levitt and reclusive Spider-Man-creating objectivist Steve Ditko. Their Starman was Prince Gavin, the ruler of a far-off planet, who was granted cosmic wristbands and a staff that enabled him to channel his innate powers. He first appeared in issue 467 of, appropriately enough, Adventure Comics in January 1980, and spent the rest of that year going through some fairly straightforward, hokey, space opera kind of stories. He wasn't seen again until he was shown to have been wiped out during the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths. So when we get to the late 1980s and DC's post-crisis continuity, we've had three Starmen. Ted Knight, who's in a limbo dimension with the JSA, Mikhail Thomas, who's never been seen again, and Prince Gavin, who's literally been erased from existence. Well, in fact, we've actually had four because in a 1957 Batman story, Bruce Wayne, who had been given a fear of bats for some unknown reason, took to fighting crime with a new name, an orange costume, and a star-shaped flying ship, calling himself, you guessed it, Starman. We'd ignore this digression entirely and we're not for the fact that the existence of a 1950s Starman will become relevant to our story later. Despite having had all these Starmen since 1941, however, DC had never actually published a comic of that name. That changed in 1988 with the creation of the fourth, fifth, Starman, Will Payton. Created by Roger Stern and Tom Lyle, Will made his debut in the first issue of the first ever Starman series in October 1988. He was a jobbing copywriter out on a hike who was hit by a mysterious bolt of solar energy giving him fantastic powers. Will's comic was an enjoyable, if slightly by the numbers, superhero story. It explored the idea of a new superhero trying to find his place in the heavily populated DC universe. It was no surprise then when the comic also chose to take a look at what it meant to be Starman when the name had existed previously. In 1990's issue 26, just after Will had got a new costume design, we were introduced to David Knight, the previously unmentioned son of the still-missing Ted. Having been travelling around Europe, David had missed Will's debut as Starman, but had plans of his own to take up his father's mantle. Wearing the old costume and wielding what was now referred to as a Star Scepter, David was goaded by a character who turned out to be Ted Knight's old enemy, the Mist, into confronting Will and battling him for the right to be Starman. 
When the two eventually figured out their differences and worked together to defeat the Mist, David retreated with his tail between his legs, having acknowledged that Will was doing a better job of being a superhero than him. But would this be the last time we'd ever see him? <laughs> what do you think? Will's series ran until 1992 and came to an end when he sacrificed himself during the crossover Eclipso, The Darkness Within. This, incidentally, would have been the first time that I personally encountered a character called Starman. The first issue had a plastic jewel on the cover. The 90s, eh kids? Anyway, with Peyton gone, the stage was set for the Knights to reappear. Ted had actually come back from Limbo with the rest of the JSA a year earlier, although he didn't take as active a role in their new adventures as some of his comrades. Then in 1994, the JSA lost the de-aging spell that had kept them looking younger than they should have done as part of the Zero Hour crossover. On a seemingly innocuous page of that story, we were reintroduced to David and younger brother Jack, with Ted handing over the Cosmic Rod and the Mantle of Starman to David. This led directly into the first issue, actually numbered Zero because it spun out of Zero Hour, of a new Starman series. But hang on, that wasn't David on the cover, was it? No, it wasn't. Because although the first issue opened with David in the role, and once again in the costume, he was promptly murdered within the first few pages. Because this new series, from writer James Robinson and initially artist Tony Harris, was all about this guy, Jack Knight, the guy who'd said he didn't want to be Starman. And he didn't. He was a junk dealer with no intention of becoming a superhero whatsoever. But over the course of the next 80 issues, he would star in one of the best superhero comics DC ever published, and the reason that I, and many others, are interested in Starman's history in the first place. The new Starman wasn't just a brilliant read in its own right, it also took painstaking care to, for the first time ever, tie together all the different versions of Starman and introduce some new ones in the process. We learned the true fates of Will Payton and Prince Gavin, and Mikhail Thomas became a recurring character. And furthermore, we saw another new Starman inserted retrospectively into the timeline. The mysterious Starman of 1951, inspired by that earlier Bruce Wayne version that was now out of continuity, was referred to several times over the course of the series, before we found out in one of its final issues who he really was, and I won't say who because it's a humongous spoiler for the series. And there were two further Starmen added into the mix as well. Tom Caller, a 1960s member of the Legion of Superheroes, turned up from the future and was revealed to have used the Starman name as an adult. He would later use it in some modern day JSA stories. Plus there was Faris Knight, a Starman from even further in the future, who was introduced when the book took part in the Grant Morrison-led DC One Million crossover. So by this point we've had, well, let's stop and count. Ted Knight, the Starman of 1951, Mikhail Thomas, Prince Gavin, Will Payton, David Knight, Jack Knight, Tom Caller, and Faris Knight. Nine Starmen. And we're not even finished, because the new Stargirl TV series is going to feature as its Starman a character who wasn't even Starman in the comics. Let me unpack that a bit before we finally bring this to an end. Stargirl, aka Courtney Whitmore, debuted in 1998 as the second incarnation of a character called the Star Spangled Kid. The original Kid was Sylvester Pemberton, a 1940s superhero whose distinctive hook was that he was a kid superhero with an adult sidekick, Pat Duggan, aka Stripesy. Although not originally connected to Starman, Sylvester began using some of Ted Knight's cosmic technology in the 1970s, and then in the 1980s series Infinity Inc., he began calling himself Skyman. So anyway, on to 1998, and Courtney, the stepdaughter of Pat Duggan, becomes the new Star Spangled Kid, fighting crime alongside a giant robot built by Duggan called Stripe. She eventually joins the new modern-day era JSA, and after the events of the end of Jack's Starman series, she takes up the cosmic rod and the name of Stargirl. Now, we've spent the last however many minutes talking about all these different versions of Starman, which probably explains why DC have decided to simplify things for their Stargirl TV show. And so instead of all that nonsense about various Star Spangled Kids and, and Sylvester Pemberton becoming Skyman, the Sylvester that Pat used to work with in this show will simply be called Starman. So there you have it, 10 Starmen. It may not be DC's most famous name, but it's certainly one of its most storied. There's no other identity with a stronger legacy history. And whether or not we ever see Ted, Jack, Mikal, Gavin or Will again, we can be sure that at some point there will be another Starman in DC Comics. And I'll be here to talk about them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more of this kind of thing, you can subscribe to our podcast and read various articles at cinematicuniverse.com. Till next time, goodbye.